okay? Um, and so there's a great amount of anxiety about this. One thing to notice is that we're caught on an assumption. There's two, several assumptions here. One is that people don't want to work, <coughs> that you only work to earn a living, and Russ was talking about that assumption. Um, stop and think about what it would be like to watch television for 30 years. <laughs> That's worse than almost any work that you can think of. Um, the other is simply the definition that everyone beyond, well, the AARP says 50, uh, is more or less in the same situation. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, if you look at uh, reports on political polling, public opinion reports, everybody over 65 is treated as the same category. All the, it's, it's swelling and swelling, it's becoming bigger than any other part of the sample, but the convention has survived. Okay, in the past, children were roughly a third of the population. This is very schematic. Roughly a third of the population. Adults, in their most productive years, were half the population, and elders were one-sixth. Uh, we're, we're essentially approaching the point of 20% of the population being elders, one-fifth, uh, and heading for a quarter in the lifetime of most of the people in this room. A life expectancy today, in the United States is 78, in Japan it's, seven, it's 82. Uh, the problem of increasing the minute you look at this group of people as identical to each other and as an economic problem and a burden, um, it's worse in, in Europe, most countries of Europe, than it is in the United States. It's a, but it's a major problem throughout the industrialized world, and it's coming up uh, in the uh, industrializing world. Okay, so to me, this looks like a system change. It's as if all the gear growth ratios of how the generations interlock have been altered. What essentially is happening is that when someone in adulthood one has a child, their parents are in adulthood two. They're not ready to sit down, to sit still, okay? They are starting a new chapter of their own adulthood. Now there's a lot of talk about the savage generation because just when people think they're free of responsibilities, oh, the people in adulthood too are looking after their parents. That's the grandparent, great-grandparent generation. This is the three generation society. The parent has the support of the grandparent. The grandparent is not very mobile. The child has some contact with two views of how the world is. This is your four generation society. Um, the child is with the parent. We prefer nuclear family households anyhow in this country. The grandparent isn't behaving like a grandparent. She or he is not sitting still telling stories. Um, but starting new projects. And the person who's sitting still is the great-grandparent. Human languages have very scanty words for talking about great-grandparents that have been so rare in the past. Now they're coming. Now you have children who have seven or eight grandparents. If you count the grandparents and the great-grandparents and the step-grandparents <coughs> and the ex-grandparents. <laughs> Okay, so instead of maybe one, or if you're lucky, two, you've got seven or eight, and families have to invent new words for them, because our languages don't have this properly. Okay, so essentially what you have, parent looking after child, grandparent looking after their parents, and starting a new life. The person who's sitting still in the rocking chair is far less available to this child simply because.
because of not connecting with that child through the link of the parent one generation removed. Now, one other thing I want to say about this is this person is perfectly capable of working. And in many cases, is going back to work and being productive where the law allows, which in some countries it does not, uh, or shifting to a different form of work. Uh, go to Home Depot. Find yourself a retired plumber to advise you on how to solve your plumbing problems. A beautiful model for the way to deploy skills. And we're not going to solve, of course, the Social Security problem, except by, through various mechanisms, keeping this person working and incidentally revising our concept of work so that that's motivated, so that working is flexible and motiva motivated for that person. Uh, the other thing that I want to say to you about it is that there is a potential, which to me is very dynamic, potential for social change. When that grandparent is alive with the child. And incidentally, these people running around, uh, getting married, taking new doctoral degrees, they're very dedicated grandparents. It's just they only show up for a few weeks here and there in most cases, uh, with, with great love and huge economic opportunity for, for business. Um, during the 04 election, uh, I was involved with a group that commissioned questions in two national polls. Political polls never ask people whether they're parents or grandparents. They only ask if they have a minor child in the household. Um, my theory was that maybe as people get older, they look further into the future. Because when you're in mid-career, you're so busy and involved with next week, so the question we were asking was finding out who was a grandparent and which political issues this affected their views on in terms of the long-term implications for the next generation. So what you have here in both the grandparent and the great-grandparent generation, an extraordinary resource of people are no longer occupying the position and the system that they were occupying previously, but have the potential for engaging in social change because they imagine a world beyond their life.